But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept. One we are unwilling to postpone and one we intend to win. We choose to go to the moon. Welcome to the 15th episode of World Blockchain Roundtable. Uh, our hosts for today are Greg from Rivet, Sean, creator and entrepreneur, and Dave from Den Social. And I'm Joe, architect founder of Dragon Chain. Uh, quick update. Last week, uh, we had a thousand lot created. Each host from last week will receive 95 lot. Uh, every topic contributor, there was only one, uh, will receive 166 lot. Um, the tokens, the lot tokens come with a perpetual passive income, free edits in the lair and future governance votes, uh, which will be fun because uh, we'll get to change rules around and uh, how we do everything here, right? Based upon that feedback. Okay, so let's go to the topics and make sure we get a refresh so that uh, all of the latest votes will be counted. Um, and let's see here. Okay, first question. What is more important, interoperability with legacy systems or a wide variety of blockchains? What do you guys think? I'd say a wide variety of blockchains. <laughs> That's the whole point is to replace legacy systems. I don't know. There is that 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 transitional period that we're in now where it's good to kind of break in. So it is it's a it's a loaded question. But yeah, I think the overall goal should be uh, to kill the legacy systems and create I think it's a good goal. I think the future is hybrid and that it's probably more important um, to interrupt with legacy systems personally. Uh, so I don't think they'll ever go away. So yep. we can talk about I it. I think that the answer is probably uh, really it depends. I know that's kind of a cop out answer, but what I mean by that is like uh, banks uh, obviously need uh, to be gateways for people to put fiat onto blockchains, right? So certainly a blockchain that does not integrate with banks is going, or the banking system in some way is going to ultimately have trouble, right? So that is a legacy system that we definitely need integration to. It's almost table stakes for having any kind of success. Um, you know, unless you're doing some kind of layer two solution, but at the, at the same time, like a layer two solution that doesn't cross integrate with as many possible things as it can, that people are using uh, is going to as well. So, and, th and then there also may be cases where narrowing that uh, uh, funnel into their ecosystem is important to the use case where, you know, interoperating with almost none of them or them, those, those integrations should be minimal. Uh, could be a key. So right. it's um, um, yeah, I'm all for like getting rid of the banks, but I don't think they're going anywhere. And at the very least, they're going to be like libraries where there's still a legacy system that's well, around. Yeah, uh, but I think I'm funny. talking broader, not just the, uh, you know, the the money um, when it comes to blockchains. Yeah, but, uh, absolutely. Greg really always says what I say, just better, <laughs> you know, much more eloquently. So, well, yeah. Like here's what I see is, and maybe this is just. Like you said, Sean, maybe just right now, this is what it is, but it's hard enough to get companies and businesses to consider using a new technology and consider using blockchain. <clears throat> it's hard enough to get that conversation started. It's a whole other barrier of entry added on top of that to convince them to, to invest the kind of capital that they need to invest to rebuild everything that they do from scratch on a whole new system that hasn't been around very long. Um, so I think that it's it's more productive for society and more productive for businesses and for companies trying to sell blockchain to businesses for for interoperability to be with with whatever's already there so that you can just kind of plug into it. Probably yeah. the best example would be like Amazon. You know, it, it, it came in quietly 
and it's like, uh, here we got books. You know, guys want to buy some books? We can buy books. You just click and you get a book. And they slowly t- took over, and people learned like, oh my god, this is so easy. And now you can order live bait for fishing on Amazon. <laughs> you can watch those videos on YouTube; they're pretty weird. But yeah, people are. I ordered a thousand shiners, and they come in a box. I got worms once from the internet. That was a great game. <laughs> so, by the way, I mean, by the way, it, it is in the end. It is about uh, the. It, it depends on what you're doing, right? Because if you're an exchange, or if you're uh, in uh, the DeFi world, you know, you you don't really care. In fact, you want to build the things that the that the bank is not doing well, or where you know they're. Mm-hmm. You, you think about it. I don't know how many how many times a month. I out of nowhere end up realizing how evil banks are. <laughs> not all of them, not always, but enough times that it's obvious. It's like there's no reason for them to do things that way, right? I've got the a good story there, there man. Yeah. Oh um, my god. But but at the same time, um, I uh, you know the whole reason that that I'm in this tech is to uh, to find ways to get uh, a business to adopt something that. Uh, likely will be uh, connected to a real world thing. And it's, it's either a real world item, you know, something that you could hold, or it's um, uh, a system that's been there for 40 years that is not going away. And what the best way to improve those systems is usually to uh, integrate them with a newer system. And then slowly the business can realize anything that is, that is ugly, you know, the squeaky wheel is like, why, why do we, why does the process still have to do this? It's like, Oh, cause that system does this. It's like, well, let's, let's right. code around that. And then all of a sudden you, you can slowly replace it. Right. Um, right. Like compat- compatibility so. support for internet Explorer eight is something that like, mm-hmm. if you work for a state government, you know, that you had to care about for like a stupid amount of time, like, well in like, you know, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there were, uh, there were teams that had to support that stuff like to this year, maybe. Where they're actually going back and making sure they've got that that uh, Internet Explorer eight test. Going. I was still using it up until like, I left my last job, like half a year ago. Still right. relied on not not Edge, but Internet Explorer, the old one. Yeah. Oh, like way back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, another interesting <clears throat> thing about this question, um, you know, is is sort of like the way that we're going to eat these legacy systems if these if they should go, uh, and we want them to go, uh, you know, by <clears throat> You know, by what means are we going to take all of the people who use them uh, from that ecosystem into the next one? And so, you, at the minimum, you need sort of like a transport layer. You know, like think of it like a, I mean, that's a question uh, later, I think, too. Yeah. A gateway where you can bring people in and give them a chance to see this as easily as possible. Well, th- there's, there's also the question of, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm usually, in fact, even before blockchain and decentralization, I was usually the guy that was all for replacing. The older systems you know it's it was always a, a scary thing for people who work on those systems because that's what they do but right. um it was usually let's improve it you know it isn't necessarily replaced but it is let's improve it but decentralization is another question that comes in here decentralization is not always needed it's it's right. when well applied it's amazing right? right but you don't you don't there's some things you don't want to be decentralized in fact but it's always an interesting question because most people in this industry, uh, it's almost like it's a, that is the dogma that you right. have to decentralize it. And I'm like, well, also, well, I, I think we're saying, that... Wait, go ahead, Sean. Okay, this is one of the first times that you were going to replace the entire system. Like, if you look at the financial industry, there's been so many revolutionary things that have become passe and died out. Like, before it was, you know. You had to had carry around a bunch of cash. And that was it forever. In my lifetime, that was it. If you were going to go do stuff for the day, you had to have enough money. And if you didn't have enough, you were screwed. You'd have to go to the bank. And then, oh, my God, there's a thing you can drive through the bank and well, get candy, you know, when your parents go through and, uh, and get money. So you, it wasn't as big of a deal. And then, it, you know, the ATM. But then, you know, can you? I couldn't imagine when when checks first came out. You know, you don't have to carry around money or or bring strong boxes to pay your employees. You can give them a piece of paper. That must have been like, you know, this huge revolution. And now I literally had to write a check about a year ago and I forgot exactly where everything went. I had yeah. to look 
Yeah, they're well, they are, they're they're like the system it. specifically designed to annoy people at the grocery store, um, <laughs> as opposed to a system for payment. But you know, it raises a great point. Like, how did the the uh, system of email replace the system of mail for writing letters? Like, they sent out uh, AOL discs in the mail. You received them. You installed them. They tell you to set up an email, which is why you've heard about it to begin with back then. And all of a sudden, you have no more reason to use the thing that came in the medium that you yeah. got the disk in. And so it, using the legacy point, system to bridge it. An interesting yeah, right. point. And I think what is probably core to this, to the answer to this question is, if you look at it historically, and let's just look at just the financial world. People went from uh, exchanging shells or other, uh, you know, uh, items to metals. Um, the you know metals gave way to uh, bank notes. Um, or and and or uh, fiat and um, most of those times, almost exclusively, it has been uh, the, a definition from a central power, right? It has been, hey, we're going to do this. Oh, now now you're able to do this. It's like, oh, great, we don't have to carry around cash anymore. Like, there might be reasons they're doing that. Wh whatever way you want to look at it, um, they can control the money supply now because of the fiat. You know, like and and do you? It's phrases you don't have to carry away, carry around all that gold anymore. Um, and then. Now, with this, the interesting thing is it's coming. It's a it's a bottom up uh, where if people are using it. It's happening. It's not <clears> that it's being. Well, I don't yeah. know if you remember, but as these things happened, and, and not a lot of them have in my lifetime, but some did, it, the use of the new technology was a big deal. It was for a big thing. Like uh, when you had a credit card, you wouldn't go and buy a, a soda on your credit card. You know, you wouldn't, you know, have them do the little thing and have to sign for it and all that for it was for soda. You go out to dinner, but it, it was there was like a set level. Like he wouldn't write a check for eighty nine cents. That's silly. No one would do that. You know, you just not if you don't have the money in your pocket, you're not going to get a soda because you're not going to be an asshole and write a right. check unless you're sending royalties from for so, some and, small and, run record or something and, like yeah, that. Well, that's I'm talking about like personal checks. But then like uh, with crypto, it's it's kind of was the same thing. It was for you know more larger purchases, and now people are starting to get like wasn't. you wouldn't even walk into a coffee shop like, hey, can I pay for this? You know, I, dollar I bought, coffee like, with uh, Bitcoin. I bought small items with Bitcoin before, way way yeah. back in the day when when you know. So well, they they hide a lot of those. So here's the about, weird thing. So they hide a lot of the costs, right? Of of running little transactions from people, right? Merchants really hate uh, the credit card fees when they try. <clears> things like run discounts on soda fountains. Like yeah. there was a guy who worked at, or who owned this little convenience store in um, uh, the, it was like the downtown hotel right across the street from the Capitol in, in Indiana. Um, and I would go in there every day uh, for a while and get like uh, you know, a big soda from the soda fountain. And if you would bring your cup in, he would give you a free refill. But one day he just like, out of the blue snapped at me. He was like, stop paying with a card with this. You know, like every time you do this, I'm losing money. And he had to put up a sign that said, uh, uh, free refills only with cash. Yeah. Uh, because he was literally losing money on every transaction. Or gas stations. If you go to a yeah. truck stop, you'll see a different price for cash than for card. And you'll see, you know, people that have minimum purchases, because if you spend less right. than this amount, then it's not worth it for the business and things like that. Right. So like well, people don't really yeah. know about that stuff. Like you didn't know about it until he snapped. But on a on a P two P thing, like if you're buying something online or you buy something from an individual, they usually put that in there. Pay with a credit card, three percent fee, you know, five percent fee. Um, so people people don't really know about that unless it's more of a peer to peer thing, which most everything with crypto is peer to peer. So we're, but that that comes with being your own bank and being having yeah. sovereignty over your money, you know a lot about the stuff that's traditionally behind the scenes. I real fast have to say, like, I wasn't trying to knock uh, my friend there because, like, if he's watching this, man, we talked about it. We, we both hate those credit card fees. Like, they're evil for business. Uh, so I, there was no knock on that that, that gentleman's yeah. business because it, it's uh, it's still there and people should go Wait. to the soda if they uh, happen to be in Indiana. But plug that's your plug that's it um <laughs> no uh, no um you want to hurt his feelings when they turn on let's say if they turn on uh lightning payments on twitter for whatever you're going to use lightning pay you know I don't, I don't know if it's for tips or something people 
using that will not likely know all of the stuff that we've been through over the past few years. It's like, oh, it's just a thing, right? Hopefully that's the way it is, right? Hopefully it'll just be a thing and yet that's the backing. Um, you guys wanna go to the next? We could. Uh, the, only, the only other thing I thought about my real fast is integrations yeah. related to, to NFT. What do you guys think about that? Because legacy really systems, what? interoperability legacy systems that interoperate with uh, with uh, uh, NFTs as a technology. Well, like uh, the coffee mug thing that Joe was just talking about, that's that's a legacy system. That's an analog system, right? You got to interoperate yeah. with the physical world. Yeah. Right. And there are very interesting things around it and ways that you can uh, make an economy work. Because it, it's a hard thing to match virtual with real and mm -hmm. keep it uh synced right um but it's doable because if you put the incentives in then it happens and it's a very interesting economic thing if they get split if this thing all of a sudden isn't worth anything anymore so they the i that split from uh, the ownership token now later if it becomes worth something that one screwed the ones that kept this the the thing synced will have value it's a really yeah. interesting thing right. it's like a certificate like, of authenticity or like something on chain yeah. odometers that's <laughs> what i want to see I want to see. I want to see. Oh, uh, I, I mind by idea. driving, man. Mind by driving needs to be a thing. Uh, there, it, there it almost was. Systems. Yeah, there. I mean, oh, so, uh, that. Let's go to the next question. But there, I mean, there's okay, some cool. systems. I want to create uh, something similar that would basically, uh, you know, you just run your mobile app, so you could prove your prove that you weren't speeding at any That's point. That's super awesome. That lot, is super right? awesome. Um, okay, get your popcorn ready. Has this question? How can these play to earn games popping up uh, all over? afford to pay all these users in crypto how can they afford this especially the free ones what are the advantages of buy-in games let's say you need bnb or solana to play uh, uh versus free play to earn games so what are you guys' thoughts on this uh, i've got I, one I, but i'll wait <laughs> I oh, uh, jose's I got go some good it. good questions but jose you need to put him uh in the, the right place so you get credit and those are the questions we actually answer yeah. Um, oh yeah, oh, yeah. True. Yeah, go, you are yes, go to the layer. Ask the questions for next week. Um, <laughs> get them voted up. Everything. Yeah. Uh, no, I would say on this, it's a very interesting thing in, in crypto, uh, in in this industry, and in particular around uh, even in DeFi, that well, sometimes. It's it's called yeah. Well, but I'm talking. I'm just talking. Sometimes, like in the DeFi world, in my opinion, some of the nomenclature is is not actually. Uh, the word doesn't mean what it really means, but they're using it because there's that's the analogy they have, which you know makes sense. Uh, not a knock on them, but but um, that when you can mint new money, it, it is a very interesting thing. So some of the games, if they mint uh, new tokens based upon activity, uh, I think it's a valid thing as long as the supply and everything is sound. But um, it's extremely interesting because it's what what governments have, or central banks have done for. A few generations now and um like say with din you know it's it's a thousand every day minted right and they're split according to activity um objectively uh, uh measured against uh these uh, markets right so we don't put any money into that but it has to it retain its value based upon how people are using the system and how uh that token has further utility so well this this is really interesting for me because i've talked to a lot of um a lot of DeFi projects which they have you know these huge huge goals and huge things that they're doing and then a game they have a game portion or a game thing that was kind of a side thing but it's exploding so much um because there's once again if there's a need for it it's gonna it's gonna you know do well and they're talking about uh who's i talking to uh, it was this one who was based in um, in Bali, and they were talking about how in in Asia, it especially like Bali and the, uh, the 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 countries that are poor and really their main bread and butter is tourism, so they've been destroyed, you know, for the past two years. That starting these different games where someone can earn a hundred dollars, you know, a month playing it, or two hundred dollars a month. But the, the mean income for that country is $200 a month. So these people are literally doubling their pay, yeah. you know, from working an eight-hour day, coming yeah. and playing a video game for a phone game for an hour a day, and they're mm -hmm. doubling their income. So it's this mm -hmm. yep. huge, I mean, you know, 60-year-old guys who, 
who don't never played a video game in their life are like, oh, okay, this is yeah, I'll do this. Yeah. Right. You know, well, I mean, then we have people from uh, Venezuela, from Africa, doing similar. And my goal has been to 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 pull up because there's some of them produce great content, and some of them who are just on there. It's like I, I need to pay rent, so I'm going to post something. Um, and and uh, it's interesting because it's valuable to the communities when they are produ when producing good content and to them it's, you know, it's life changing. So it's a great mm -hmm. thing. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll say on Den, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm sure not everyone thinks of it this way, but if you think about Den as a video game and you use, if you, if you, if you spend as much time studying the mechanics of Den as you, you might with like a, a video game that you want to get good at and skilled at, um, you will, be appreciated by the community because you'll naturally find things to post that are relevant and you will make money. Um, and the thing with making money that plays into this question, I think, is that <clears throat> the, the the value of a token on a project, a game project that's like paying people in the token that they mint, you're going to make some kind of money. It's, it's harder to say, well, how much am I going to make, right? Because the value of that is determined by whatever it's worth to the community and whatever you can use it for and the reasons people have to buy it versus you selling it, right? There's a whole like economy around that. Um, but then the, the last thing that I wanted to say that I was saving from earlier with this one is that uh, the question asked about games that are free to play versus you got to buy some like B&B &B and Soul and stuff like that. Blanket statement, and there's caveats to every blanket statement, but if you've got to buy into it, it might be a scam and it might be a, uh, a, a pyramid scheme and it might be something that isn't going to stick around for a while. So it's just definitely not free. Make sure, and it's not free and make sure that you're at least having that it's fun. Right. Cause at that point you're paying someone for a game. You're not, yeah. you're not playing. To you know, I've know. been surprised uh, um, talking to some of the game makers that it's t there, there are people that spend excessive amounts of money and that's where they make all their money. Right. You have well, no idea. Yeah. Now no you idea. Can I, work, I used to work for Xbox. Well, I, I, I would have people calling me because we froze their account. And they're like, hey, man, I need to buy some more V-Bucks for, uh, you know, NBA 2K. I'm like, well, so you spent uh, $1,200 today. So we thought that might be a, a, someone might have control yeah. of your account. So it's the, the system automatically froze it for, you know, 72 hours, 48 hours. <clears throat> Just so we could contact you and let you know, hey, man, someone spent $1,200 on stupid video game, in-game purchases. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, yeah, it was me, but I got to buy this other yeah. dude. I got to buy these shorts. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I yeah. can't do anything. It's, it's, and that's it's how automated it lock. That's where the money comes from. Weirdo. Right? And that answers the question of like, well, how can they afford to pay this? Well, they're not paying it. They're minting a new currency and the community is, is using in that. In a lot of currency. cases. Yeah. Right. In a lot of cases. And then like, okay, so here, let me pose you guys a scenario, right? You get, you get out your new Grand Theft Auto, or Gran Turismo 5. You pop the disc in, you start racing around the track and you see sponsors on the sides of the mm -hmm. race course, right? At one time in the past, and actually today, anywhere they're not already using what sort of the power of blockchain offers you, uh, those sponsors are pre-established by an institution uh, that that's a company that makes these games. They go out, they seek the sponsors, they get their artwork, they put it in. It's coordinated by an institution, but but blockchain allows you to collaborate in a way yes. that cuts out those people, right? So instead of having a game that uh, derives sort of some of its ability to be affordable to um, uh, sponsorships they set up. You can have an ongoing sponsor system, right? Where there's like a game uh, that you're racing along the track on and somebody can be like, holy crap, that driver's amazing. And I happen to own a startup and I'd like my logo on the side of their car. Yeah. Uh, and you send them a message and all of a sudden their artwork is right on the side of the car and you're putting money into that system that can pay people to drive. And, and you know what's great about that? The effect of it is it, basically it's a governance effect that Rather than having, because because you know everybody knows this, there are great games that that veer off for reasons that are don't make sense, and they do make sense uh, on the inside because they had some political thing they had to do, or this company wanted uh, a company that they owned to be uh, you know to do something inside the game, and it's all types of stupid decisions that happen uh, because of politics and bean counters inside of companies, and this kind of. You know that's still always present, but uh, it it allows the system, if you want it to be, and if you look at Din, to to effectively uh, uh, have a more organic uh, uh, future. That you know, the you know, I wanted to make sure with Din that it wouldn't be 
uh, you know, if ever it was purchased away from us or something, that it would be effectively stupid for the purchaser to change some of the things because it, you know, you look at how what happened with Dig, you look at what happens with has happened with Reddit more than once, where management really screwed up. They lose tons of users. You know, um, it's an interesting interesting thing that you can apply governance to the game players. You can say, hey, we're thinking about adding this. We could we could look at the people who play most and uh, you know have however we want to score it. Um, let them give us a lot more feedback or have some part of the decision. How so, cool was it to hear the term bean counters? <laughs> I haven't heard that in so long. That right. was, was an accounting tool once upon a time. <clears throat> yeah. I think like, I've said that most. Owning I know, a ch ch adding machine, right? Multiple meetings. Um, I, I do think that uh, bean counters are only second to lawyers and evil. And oh, politicians right. are somewhere in there, but it's a passive. It's a passive uh, thing that the, the bean counters are this weird passive evil that exists everywhere. Where that yeah. that great uh, snack you used to have as a kid is no longer the same because of the bean counters. Uh, the uh, the process at your bank is no longer the same because of the bean counters and the lawyers. Um, you know, I didn't and, get what you said until you explained it that way. I was like, oh yeah, it's no, they, they, they go know, hand in hand. Oh, yeah. we, we we can we can make a, a quarter of a cent more on this box if we take part of the cardboard off. And now yeah. guess what? When you put a, a cereal box in your cabinet, it will not stay shut right. because they're saving that quarter cent on that little right. bit of extra or that we can charge more if we make the cardboard more like we, and yeah uh, and use oh, the same size little cereal bag inside with yeah. the same amount of cereal the, right? uh, it looks the thin, so they sell more yeah units. they they uh, thin now 25 um, percent oh, bigger uh, dr dr bolanos yes you do need to go into den to ask questions by the way yes yes yep the link okay. is, a, is a couple a couple of spots above you okay um next question you guys good that was pretty. Yeah. That was a great question. Okay, Jacob Wayne, how important is it for everyday consumers to easily understand blockchain interoperability, or is understanding it even necessary for adoption? <clears throat> um, Questions are badass, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the way they really are. First one a little bit too, because they seem <laughs> simple, but they're not simple. Mm -hmm. You know, like the first one, I just jumped in and like, oh, blah. well, OK, hold on. Yeah, like on this one, I would say and I'll just jump in on it that like the, there's two parts of that is if 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 your answer on the first one was that maybe it's more important for interoperability to be, you know, with other blockchains and you want to go pure blockchain, maybe it is more important that people understand it. But if, you know, interoperability with interoperability with legacy is more important, then I would say it's probably far less important to the point where you might not want people to even know it's on blockchain um, to to do it. So that's my answer for that one. Yeah. Um, I, 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 man. I think it's important for people to know it exists, but not to know why this is so much better, why this is different, but not have to understand. To know that you've got 225 you know, horsepower, to know you have turbo, but not necessarily know how everything works under the hood. You know, right. basically, well, understand isn't this true in a lot of people? but I don't understand how it works, well, but I know it's better. Um, well, there's a there's an element, though, that we have to pay attention to, right? And it's that one of the real superpowers of uh, computing was the ability to easily make copies of things, right? When people got the idea in their heads that they could copy paste, that was like, holy shit, I don't have to rewrite that. This guy doesn't care if I use this. I work at this on this team and we can all copy and paste around our stuff and we build a thing in half the time. And anytime we need that text again, we can paste it into this new thing. Um, imagine trying to then come up with a system where you can't stuff that genie back in the bottle, right? Um, you, you would not believe if you heard that there was a way to prove that you can't copy and paste this um, uh, in some cases, right? You might think that that's a system that is just bound to be hacked and somebody's going to figure out how to cheat it. Well, that's one of the really neat things about blockchains. And if people can't have a situation where they're going to try to copy and paste something and no matter what they do, it never changes and no one can hack it. Um, it's one of those one of those situations where I think knowing how the blockchain works really helps adoption. Um, it, 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 it is good. To, yeah. Sorry, you cut out. Um, it, it, oh, it is no, good okay. to differentiate um, the business from the user as well, the consumer, because uh, you know, in my mind, uh, I think the interoperability on the consumer side, it, 
I, in the ideal system, they wouldn't know. They wouldn't care. They're just doing the thing they're doing and buying the thing or uh, taking the action. You know, or everyone else thing. is using this now. So I guess I'll switch to but that. That's, that's let me tell you. Yeah, but let me tell you, it is extremely <clears throat> important that businesses understand what's possible. And it's really hard because uh, most of the crypto industry is all about uh, number go up and, you know, all the things I always uh, uh, complain about uh, with speculation uh, that it, it, it makes it harder when you're trying to, to sell the thing that can be done because you have to cut through that. And it's, it's easier today than it was even eight months ago. Um, but it's still, you know, not uh, universally so. Uh, but, you know, one way or another, ideal system, right. uh, the interop just happens, right? I think, well, yeah, I think it all should work that way. But I think for adoption, for people to say, oh, this is built on blockchain. Oh, this is yeah. good shit. You know, yeah. that, so they should be aware of it, you know? Yeah. Okay. Um, and also, uh, digital foods, I did not know this, the term bean counter um, is uh, the word Ebenezer. It's a... Uh, Eben is bean, and Zay here is and counter. counting. Wait, what wait, the dickens, know. man? The more we know. <laughs> what the dickens, yeah, that is pretty cool. <laughs> digital, um, digital foods, excellent. That's just great info. That's super um, cool. Okay. And I'm going to use that other... every Christmas now and look intelligent. <laughs> One other thing that we want to think about, right, um, with respect to this is so people are trying to do things with computers that they've always done and they develop a terrible habit like hyper secure passwords involve a, you know, a stupid number of different combinations to include more of the key space. It makes sense. Uh, to the people who invent the idea that this will make computers more secure if everybody did this with their passwords. So they put in a password policy at work and all of a sudden people can't remember their freaking passwords. So uh, the system actually ends up making it so people are more likely to write them down or stick them on keyboards or whatever. So like in practice, it makes things worse that they don't know why they need that. Because as it turns out, you could get the same effect from having a really long but memorable password uh, if you wanted to make sure that the you know, the available key space wasn't just brute forcible. Yep. Um, yep. And, you know, it, it, so knowing how it works in, in those cases too, I think That's true. will help, will help people, you know, one, not, uh, not make stupid mistakes based on rote rules uh, that are meant to make up for the lack of knowledge, but also um, get people out of those bad habits because there'll be, there'll be a lot of, cha a lot of chances with this as we integrate it to, to learn how it works as opposed to put in, Helper patches that make us, you know, ignorant of the computing systems and uh, you know, and open to that kind of exploitation from some of the more big, powerful people in the world. So behavior, yeah, cool. It's true. You know, just this weird, weird thing. When I first got into crypto, I didn't know a lot, and I, uh, and the seed phrase is thirteen words. So as I opened up an account, I, I thought when it said it had to have a password, I made a thirteen-word password. Because I thought I was going through movies, looking for quotes, anything that was easy to remember that was 13 words. So now I had these like massively long, huge passwords and that were uh, really secure, but they're easy to remember because they're, but they're 13 words. So, and I still use them because it was, you know, but that was, that is a true, a true thing, Greg. Correct. I know people that have like five Facebooks because they literally forgot their password and they forgot that they had to change the same password to their emails. So they're, they're stuck. So they just have to start a whole new account. Yeah. All right. Man. Identity. All right. Next. Next question. That was a great one. Okay. Um, Angel Breaker, what would be your killer interchain application? What do you guys think? Interchain. Well, mine's a game. I just don't want to talk about it too much because I think it's a really good idea and I don't want you to have it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's this that quote that um, if your idea is really great, you have to shove it down people's throats. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> the really, the really good ideas. Um, well, that, that's this cool. That's true. Right? A but decentralized I mean, interchain uh, exchange, a true dex that can operate on. Uh, yeah, which different chains. That's I think would yeah. be the killer app. That's that's probably pretty close to to what I would say too. Besides the game, I mean that's that's what's been. Um, it's still being attempted, right? There's still startups starting a new version of it to try to get it. Yeah, you know, I would you know, say more right. 
I would say for me, it would be a thing you can deploy uh, an application to that that has all of the uh, bits and bobs of deployment taken care of for you. If you want to build an application that allows you to integrate all the chains at once uh, from one code base, would be mine, because that would that would be, make it really easy for people to come up with uh, helper functions that would let you say, "I want to use this chain for that, and this chain for that, and this chain for that," and sort of uh, turns um, uh, the chains themselves into objects and object oriented programming systems. For so example. like basically an application that allowed people to much easily, much more easily um, just use the stuff instead of learning about right. how it works. Right. Right. Like a code, like the would, blockchain. Wouldn't that also breed, uh, right? or, or bring design. about um, competition that's never been there? If you could use Uniswap, but choose to pay for gas in Binance coin, like a, 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 it would be it, 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 it's it's still, the miners wouldn't get any money on Ethereum because they're charging nine dollars a trade or twelve dollars a trade. Well, Whereas if you're on Binance Smart Chain, you're paying like a dime. Yeah. So uh, the things that's, would have to change cool. in order for people to start using that again. Yeah, that's that's why in our, the token interop is most appropriate placed there. That if I if you know if Ethereum fees are high today, I could still transfer this thing on another chain to you, and then you can bring it back on Ethereum whenever you want, right? Yeah, that, that's the ideal, and you know right. it's doable. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of you know who wants to do it, and all right, or well, automation that and, balances across fifteen yeah. different chains for arbitrage. I mean, granted, there's still the dark forest problem. And it's, but by the way, that's the whole question that, that I, or at least uh, the answer that I that I would offer for Ethereum scalability. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, it's more scalable coming up, right? But but that's the whole point. It's already there. You already have multiple test nets. You already have Ethereum Classic. Um, you know, you already have the ability with the same API to use different chains. And yes, well, it's test net. There's not enough, uh, not enough security there. He's like, yeah, that's the damn point. If I don't need the security, all and but I want lower fees, I could send it there. It, it would literally be um, you get what you pay a, for. Yeah, it's a. It would be a competition of chains. Right. That's what it should be. And that's why I. That's why I. <laughs> I dislike maximalism so much in its purest form because you have to have the competition. If you only had, if you say, okay, yeah, we give up. Everything is just Bitcoin. And yeah, we could plug stuff into Bitcoin. You're losing too much because it's, it's exactly the reason that Vitalik left Bitcoin mm -hmm. that it was, it was too constrained. It was like, right. Yeah, like the alternative is this guy with an idea like, gets told to kick rocks. Yeah. I've been, I've been, I've been saying uh, maximalism is like racism. And it's too harsh. It doesn't. It doesn't sink in. But maximalism is a monopoly. That's much easier to accept. Yep. You know, right. people. Okay. I, I think it's more like racism because I, I feel like it, I'm, it, it, I'm it, really, you know, it is. If you hear some of the maximalists and the stuff they say, it's psycho. You know, they're like right. the world can burn, but Bitcoin will live. Right. Yeah, I make, I make it a point. Ah, it's a it's problem. It's, right. It's, well, it becomes a meme too. So, mm -hmm. and 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 doing it with yellow pants makes it even all all the more so. <laughs> you know, it's like I, I that, that is a plan. If if all else fails, I'll just start yelling, uh, wearing yellow yellow pants, start going screaming around, and uh, you know, maybe people will pay attention. Who knows? All right. Um, you know what would be really quick? Um, a great killer interchain application that that I, I hope somebody builds is a shitcoin arcade where we can take all the bag holders, holders wow. coins and tokens, no matter what blockchain they're on and you can just use them to play games in the in, in yeah. the arcade we I had like a, uh, physical oh, arcade. Yeah. I, I have two answers for this then not necessarily that they're the killer applications because i think killer applications are just what a business needs you know and then it depends if, on uh, what you're trying to if, kill if stores or sia coin is is what you you know, need in your business today you could plug it in and that's the beauty uh, of this technology um but we did have we had one that we were going to build as a demo we just didn't have time when we first did the interchain uh patent that was where you could send uh any random erc20 token in uh it would bounce around between different um interchain uh, uh and uh you would get some bundle of other tokens that someone else has sent in and who knows what right there might be some some uh valuable stuff in there maybe some some totally worthless uh <laughs> unlisted stuff as well likely right. but you'll get something um, that Maybe was one it makes of a corrupt and, call to your your contract in a way that, that breaks yeah. it weird. But it, yeah. That's basically air coins, right? Yeah, but it would be <laughs> fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the second uh, it's, it's, interoperability. You think about it. Uh, this most interesting uh, is an integration with Amazon Mechanical Turk, where you could literally pay a person to do something through this API. 
So I could have this chain doing this and every so often it's going to get somebody, it's going to pay somebody a nickel to go do something. Um, that would be awesome. Freaking crazy. It'd be really awesome to hook that up to like GPT three and we, just we, like send a random yes. prompt for people well, to do some random bullshit. That's like an yes, API yes. uh, endpoint for humans. Exactly. And it could, it could literally be, we've, thought. we've thought about it even on dragon chain side as another level that you could have, uh, you know, um, an L six, uh, that is literally a human clicking on something. It's like a human looking at it. It's like, yes, that's Ooh. true. I say yes. I feel um, like there's some danger AM. there. Like, I feel like you've got to wave a little red flag when you, when you start thinking about a thing that could Danger is the spice of life though, Greg. We need, we need danger. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, no, but that's, like, that's what that is, Greg, what <clears throat> Bitcoin does. Bitcoin is already rewarding people for running at a very expensive hardware and spending, spending a lot of energy. Yeah. It's already doing that. Well, but they're not like sitting there running it. It would be way different if it was like, if the whole yeah. chain was validated by people uh, doing a tediously monotonous oh, task no. that requires you to put a hood over your head. Oh, but, well, think you know, of like, it this way. Think of it this way. It incentivize the terrible, uh, uh, tragic human outcomes that nonetheless but, but imagine, but, imagine if you had an identity system that was, uh, that was already used uh, enough, so you have system. enough adoption. So every time I log in, every time I buy a ticket, I get challenges, and it takes it to my key. And... My key said, you know, I'm signing. Yes, I did actually intend to buy that ticket. It really is me, Joe. And so mm -hmm. I buy the key or anything that is of importance in the business. So those things don't just come with, okay, I'm going to uh, create a transaction and assign it. They come with, I want to do this. So the system challenges them with a random uh, hash or something. They mm -hmm. sign that hash, send it back. That random hash doesn't have to be random. It could literally be a different thing that, okay, I've done this thing and I want a verification that a human will actually, a real human will tie in. It's not just a machine running in China. And all of a sudden that's that. And it's when people, it's not like I'm sitting here grinding. It's that, oh, I right. bought that ticket. I happen to sign a thousand other transactions that I don't care about, but there's value to the system that a real human making a real purchase actually signed it. Right. It's a really crazy thing. Um, yeah. Anyway. yeah, and that's cool. I think I think the uh, the danger that I'm more highlighting is like, what okay. if you've got a situation where, um, you know, uh, picking a single piece of fuzz out of the carpet and uh, breathing on it and getting it just the right kind of roundness so it's a perfect dingleberry, and then you drop that thing into this uh, this machine you buy at the store that there's a dingleberry collector, and mm -hmm. and it sends a signal to the blockchain if that dingleberry is just right that gets you paid a certain amount of cryptocurrency that makes it so you could live off picking dingleberries. Um, yeah. Would and that be the sort of thing that we would want to make uh, economically no. viable, even if we no. could, because then there'd be tons of people crawling around on the carpet all day. But it, but it could be cleaning up the, uh, the sides of the highways though. Right. Yeah. You could, I mean, that, could to, that would be awesome. You know, but like, yeah. Um, I guess at a certain point you have to, you have to make sure that the things we're incentivizing are things that we don't want to first build robots to do. Yes. Yeah, that's true. So, okay. anyway, it's it's nice Dave saying. brought up air coins, Joe. <laughs> air coins. I just she was talking about uh, having it, like it, a, it, it, I forget it, it, what it was, but it yeah. sounded uh, it sounded similar to that. <clears throat> what you were talking about is like some. No, uh, I, I, I created a group for uh, for the CEO and Joe of, uh, of air coins. Oh, Joe, that one. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he's been waiting in there. I just checked. Wasn't that like a week or two ago? I just looked. Okay, it, it was been last week. Because okay, told us all right. Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> I wasn't trying to prod you. I just I will. I, 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 okay, yes, yeah. it, it is that also uh, digital foods. I was I was making a a gross joke for people in the know. By the way, yeah. I was I was yeah. yeah I, I thought you I might was, bring I was looking at that, and then I heard dingleberry, and, and we could pick dingleberries. I was like, oh man. I looked down for 10 seconds and I don't know what I'm I feel like we need a count. But you're talking about Jingleberry. <laughs> I don't know how many oh, times Jingleberry has been said on the show. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's probably it. So, all right. Go next one. All right. Earth Dragon. Since I've been in blockchain, I always hear blockchain will change the world. I don't think it has as much as, pe uh, as people claim. Is it possible? It's just too confusing for mass adoption and for the general population. Um, oh. I, I can say that uh, I I think it hasn't definitely hasn't changed the world as much as people wanted it to. I think that uh, they uh, uh, nobody I don't think anybody really claims that it has changed the world yet at least much. Um, and I will say I not as much it. as it should have been able to. Um, but there have been a lot of hurdles put in place by central powers and um, the uh, the industries that would be. Uh, affected by the technology for certain there are a lot of places uh 
primarily public sector where you will, if you ever try to go in and affect the, it's a hard, hard sell Very in true. certain circles um, to, to uh, uh, get them to turn it on for voting as an example. And the issue is, uh, if, if, and this is why it is important for the common people, people who don't care normally about the technology to understand it, because if they do understand it, they will be the only way you ever get it. That, right. uh, it's not going to come from the people already in power, right? It's right. going to come from people who want to have transparency. So well, with, you people, yourself, what, with you people here, I can't believe that I'm going to be this guy out of everyone, including when there's like 20 people on here. I'm the most dollar go up guy in the group, but I am going to expound on this. So a blockchain has changed the world. It has awoken people to the possibilities of what is now possible. It has given sovereignty and, and the, the authority to go forward with, with ideas that were not possible before, but just in supply chain alone, two years ago, three years ago, uh, you know, medical shipments of, uh, of of medicines went out that were counterfeit, and they killed hundreds of people in China. And all they, as soon as that happened, they instituted a, I forget what it was, I think it was V chain or something, but that stopped it. They the people aren't able to do that anymore. And if you're someone that would have died today because that technology is put in place. That's changed the world for you and your family because you're not dead. Um, but also the reason the reason why it hasn't is because, like Joe said, people don't want that level of transparency. Um, but it's it's mainly nefarious, nefarious well, types that are stopping it or slowing it down. Imagine but it's 1992 it as well. Like picture 1992. You just got your like Prodigy install disk. You know, like what's this internet yeah. thing they say is going to change the world? Um, and right about the time a flash of light behind you and like a Terminator style orb opens up in your living room and somebody walks through it and says, wow, you just got the internet. What year is it? And you go, Hey, uh, I got to ask you about the future. What happens? And what, what does, what does this whole internet thing pan out to be? Um, without even getting out the smartphone, uh, the person, uh, who comes back says something like, oh yeah, it's amazing. You can get uh, rides instantly from a device that's uh, basically more powerful than your world's best supercomputer in your pocket. Um, and you'll get in cars with strangers and uh, you'll be able to go to uh, restaurant menus that have every restaurant in your city and whether or not they're open. So you can just order them with one tap uh, and they'll know exactly how to find you using this thing called GPS. And like, people are gonna look at you like you're crazy if you say that in 1992. Yeah. Um, they, they would have had no way to conceive of it because the invention wasn't there for long enough to come up with, you know, the necessary base ideas to build some of these really amazing things. We're the place where we're, bu we're building building blocks that will be the first products that will be the building blocks for uh, whatever the hell will happen when this thing is big in 20 years. Like we're looking at a technology that's going to mature over the course of the next decade. Well, that's where I'm at. I don't. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I just want to make sure that it, whatever's going to happen, that it does, because it just is too inspiring. Yep. Also, people are people don't want to be inspired. You know, there. I can remember, literally having a cordless phone, which was crazy, right? It weren't stuck to the wall, and then watch going to see Dick Tracy in the theaters, which it was insane that he had a wrist phone. But I, I use a cordless phone, and I can accept that. But this is still crazy science fiction that the fact that I could have a cellular phone and go anywhere and talk to it, someone and then the video fact calls that I see people. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. that was Star well, Trek. That was and, way science fiction. I, I don't it know what you guys think, calls. but I, I think this uh, it feels this feels very much like um, yeah, like I I was there early internet, you know, but I was the geek. And this is uh, I think the early crypto felt like uh, when <clears throat> all of my friends in high school that weren't uh, nerds all of a sudden we're using the internet. That was a big wake up call for me. Cause like, you know, Whoa, I can't believe right. the, you know, he, that he has a, an email account. Right. Um, and then um, it feels now though, this, this very much feels like more into maybe the uh, 96, 97, where there are um, companies starting to understand how to use it. And uh, that's what it feels like. So it's, you know, we're still very early, but, 
this is the part where it starts to really affect things. So I would take it a step further than that. Even I would say that we haven't had a change like this in the <clears> over <throat> century. And that if you look back for, if you hunt for, and you can find, by the way, if you hunt for these stories about what it was like when alternating current transmission made it possible to connect electricity to every business. Um, mm -hmm. Back then they were like, sweet, we don't have to use candles anymore, uh, but we still have to burn through the rest of our candle supplies. So we're going to wait to invest in light bulbs. This is true. Um, but, but like, yeah. imagine back then trying to imagine what you would do with like, Literally uh, burn through the rest of our uh, candle supply. Right, exactly. <laughs> Literally, uh, you know the the photocopier or the desktop computer, or any of these things, all came from this. But it took over a century to turn into the kind of power that you get from today's well, uh, today's and connected ecosystem. Can I tell you too? Uh, the cycles are happening fast enough now that most people have seen. They they remember the internet cycle. They remember when uh, you know landlines versus mobile, all that type of stuff, right? Um, early internet you know i was i was a kid and it was still um because i was a history guy i knew it's like you know this feels very much like what i had, uh, had been told about early radio days where if you had a radio in your home there were like two or three different kinds of batteries one which you had to take to the shop to get recharged another you had to, and it was a very technical thing that you had to know what the hell you were doing much like in the early days running uh you know windows uh, 3.1 .3 uh, and uh, having trumpet windsock, you know, and having to get uh, having to get a dial up, you know, configured and have to, you know, get the uh, best modem you can afford and all that. Yeah, I remember writing a, a website on GeoCities and Notepad. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah but, kind of but slowly, this is pre GeoCities. It's like GeoCities, there was no yeah, well, such was, thing, right? I'm yeah, younger, that was my first. <laughs> it was just like, it was so technical there's no way that anybody that uh you know that i knew in my normal you know work would would do this right but uh it was super exciting and slowly those things were uh were you know, cleaned up and it's it's the same thing with all technologies where here's this new thing and the, the early adopters pay a lot but learn a lot and there's a lot if you're a company then uh, or if you're an individual that is in that uh, uh, line of business um, positioning is everything. So, you know, the earlier you know stuff and, and the more you see about patterns of how technology develops, the more you can, uh, um, you know, you, you leverage that knowledge and you position whatever you're doing around it. And, uh, you know, some things you get wrong, the timing is the hardest thing to get mm -hmm. right, you know, how fast things will move and all that. But that's yep. super interesting to follow because there's so many analogies. It's like you can. Yep. Well, and it's crazy. another really good gauge of when things are starting to get a good, get to a peak is to see when the really you know, amazing minds that work on some of the stuff that you you find really impressive. You know, like um, you know, let, let's say the you know the whole Dragon Chain team is like sold their company to uh, you know some bigger holding company that just manages the day to day affairs, and you guys go on and do something else. Right, the whole team goes to this new this new thing, whatever it is, and you know, the smartest people that you trust the most are the ones you should watch to see where they go because that's going to be the thing that's going to be next. But they're not going to leave until there's a next thing that's worth uh, uh, exploring more than this one. You know, so right. uh, when when really brilliant minds start to migrate to something you've never heard of, and, you know, insert random mega board here. Um, it could it could very well be that I mean, I, blockchain is changing. We, we spent a lot of time talking about the internet. <clears throat> blockchain is changing what the internet is. You know, it's very possible and maybe likely that blockchain is going to be a buzzword of, you know, this decade, but it's just going to be the internet, how the internet yeah. works, well, you know. If you look at, if you look at internet social um, world, uh, you know, it used to be very decentralized. It was, it, it, over time, you know, Facebook, Twitter, you have these places that people go and now it's, you know, and it, it, before, you could theoretically still, I'm going to create a website and I'm going to talk, but nobody will see it, right? Because Google is forcing everything into these channels. Um, mm -hmm. that blockchain is kind of the answer to that because it opens it up and it draws people for other reasons. But I've said this before and, and for the number go upside, Sean, it is, um, what we saw in 2018, I don't think was a bubble. Um, it looked like a bubble because the regulators came in and did things and it, it affected things for in, in, in the real world and people lost money because of what they did. I'm um, still, I'm still kind of convinced by the way that that was, the, that was changing the value of the fiat currency as opposed to. Like, I still think that was well, a drop. I, no, it's, it was because the SEC came in, sent letters to everybody. So all of the major investors who 
who were saying, okay, they're going to get in on Ethereum. They're going to get it. They were like, well, okay, wait a minute, stand back. You know, they, and they knew ahead of everyone else. So they sold out, um, which dumped the market for two, three years. And um, the crazy thing is, I don't think it was a bubble. I think it was the first time in human history that anybody in the world could take part in that wealth creation. It's like all of a sudden mm -hmm. anybody can take part. It's going to get freaking <clears throat> huge and it's going to it's going to make make uh, Wall Street and make uh, Silicon Valley look like a. You know, Every, everyone talked about how, uh, you know, cab drivers and shoeshine boys are talking about Bitcoin. And uh, there's I don't know why those are still real viable, uh, especially shoeshine boys. Why well, that's a viable career. <laughs> But anyway, uh, <laughs> in the day's point, he he, uh, he talks about how the the pe most people don't know how much the internet has changed since its inception. Yeah. You know, because it's one of those things like Joe said, you, they just use it. You know, they don't know how it was completely different, and how there's like layers to it, and how there's just it, there's a bunch of weird trash underneath it that things are built on. You know that that are old, but uh. But I thought that that's a really good analogy, the Internet itself. You know, everyone uses it. Not many people know how it works, and nobody really knows how much it's changed. I mean, that, that's a tiny, tiny fraction of people know how much oh, it's yeah. changed from the be like, yeah. beginning time. Well, I mean, and the ideas are kind of timeless, right? Like uh, the idea behind uh, a computer that could sort of generally complete any logical operation was on paper for for uh, you know decades before you could actually build one uh, cryptography that was not practically breakable um, by the people who invented the cryptography system was not a thing that you could actually count on existing in the real world but you knew about on paper until around two thousand one like um, some really surprising things about computing are that the the principles are timeless and that we sort of already have the future invented and we can see what its implications are. Um, and it's just a matter of human beings building up the processes to catch up. So when, when you see somebody being confident about it and they know about this idea that you can go back and find like a 1925 paper by somebody you've never heard of who uh, created an information concept yeah. that when we can compute it will work uh, and we're just building the necessary hardware. Um, yeah. That yeah. is that's that's the power of this, and it's it's going to go a lot farther before we run to the edge yeah. of those predictions. And you and you look at early early builders or the hard, like you look at uh, Charles Babbage. You guys seen any of that stuff? Um, that they're you know they have one machine uh, I think in a museum in London that they built. There's another one that they haven't attempted to build, right. but it basically is a mechanical computer. And when you see it run, there are videos mm -hmm. of it online. It's beautiful. It looks like it was a piece of art. It does. It looks like an art installation. Oh yeah. But it's it's a calculator that you uh, it uses. It's crazy. We actually named um, we actually named Austin's first uh, or helped Austin name his first um, LLC when he uh, left regular work and became a freelancer in blockchain. This was like back in 2017. We named it Note G because that was the note that uh, Ada Lovelace annotated Babbage's uh, analytical engine paper with the first computer program. I mean, that, and that was happening before, like, I was like, yeah. how long ago was that? And these, these concepts were coming around then. Okay. All right. So that's it for the topics. Now we are going to go we to like cover a lot of topics. We covered yeah, a lot. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. So let's, this, um, let's, the the we ever have. Uh, let's take, uh, let's, and, and here are the rules. All right. So we're going to go down the line. Um, you guys can choose, you know, to go to down or up, but um, everybody gets one answer and make it short, very short. If it's too long, I'll cut you off rudely, uh, as rudely as I can, right? And then um, uh, after you answer- as a Canadian. You can't go backwards, right? So you, you can't um, say, oh, I should have added, nope, that's it, right? Or, and you can pass, you can say you pass, right? Okay, so, uh, and I'll go last, if that's all right. All right, so question, interoperability is key to both ETH and Sol. Uh, Solana, do you see ETH as too big to fail at this point? What scenarios do you say Sol taking over Becoming second to Bitcoin, Sean. I think people that say anything should be to fail in crypto now are <clears throat> jaded to the point of being kind of like a, a maximalist because crypto is still so small. So if there's a massive, huge influx of no coiners and regular folks that say, "Oh, I really like this Ethereum Classic or Solana or Solana. Cardano or whatever it is," it will kill you. Lightning round. Whether that's going to happen or not, I don't think I don't. 
I would just say it ain't like that. It's not like that at all. Uh, it's it's all the things, not one thing. And ranking them is stupid. Sorry. I think Bitcoin. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Cryptocurrency, crypto fixes too big to fail. Um, I don't think anything's too big to fail right now. And um, okay. what was the other one? Yeah, I don't know about specifically about those projects. Yeah, they're they're going to have different niches. They're going to have different different things. It, I think it is worth doing another round uh, on that. And by the way, yeah, uh, too big to fail. I think is a it's a, a banking world and a financial world thing. I don't think it applies to crypto. Um, I crypto itself won't fail, but it's not because it's too big. Um, well, I think uh, too big to fail is one of the problems that's in my head of like a, of like the president. It's like we have to bail out the crypto industry. We've got to pump <laughs> yeah. billions of dollars in it. This is crazy, right? Right. Gosh, yeah. Um, okay. Um, let, but let's do the second part though. Um, with the recent bug on ETH uh, that could have been catastrophic, do you think it will roll back the chain uh, if the if, there, if an exploit would in fact wreak havoc? Quick, quick thoughts, Sean. Uh, I think they would. Okay. Greg? I don't think that this is a, a, a fairly firm question. I, I think that what happened last time is evidence of the fact that you can get something that's pretty exploity in there um, and not take down the system uh, yeah. even when yeah. you don't have a perfected release process. Like they, they announced they did a lot better with the security control without any overarching authority telling them they had to. They announced early they got... Uh, they updated the providers, and uh, it's it's not gonna get. But my answer to you is, it's not going to. Uh, there's not going to be a catastrophic hack because decentralized systems do take care of themselves. They run around damage. Dave, longest chain wins. I uh, I think they might roll it back. If, uh, that spe like specifically Ethereum might roll it back, but longest chain wins otherwise. And uh, you know, Soul has had its own issues as well. So we'll see. Okay. And on this. Uh, 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 you can look at history. You can see they have done it in the past. In fact, I was a big supporter of the fact it was a beautiful thing, in my opinion, that the Dow failed so miserably, um, which caused that fork. Uh, and I was disappointed that they forked. I mean, it's like, yes, that's the whole damn point of it. it if it if it's bad code, it's going to fail. If there's a mistake, it's going to fail. That's the point of risk. And uh, anyway, I was I, w I didn't like that they did that they did roll back and fork. Um, and uh, the second is the most recent and I, I didn't looked into it in detail but that happened oh. in bitcoin i remember being freaked out when it happened in bitcoin i can't remember what year it was but there was this point in time where they had to change code because there was this fork happening that couldn't be fixed and uh there was a, a bug well, and it so can I have more thing to this one joe and uh, which by the way but point. bitcoin people were attacking ethereum for for this and i'm like guys just go go back in history this happened to bitcoin Guys, anyway. also, can I have one thing to that, Joe, just real fast? Yeah, like, yeah. The neat thing is it's a fork. Like, you don't have to choose the system that somebody tells you to. If you right. want to decide, mine the system, and then you get to vote on which chain yep. you actually continue it's, to build on. Yeah, the, 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 the modern modern West has like some much, kind of company deciding. Yeah, modern West has too much celebrity worship. I mean, that that's the thing. At some point in the future, I will tell you, likely a, a fork uh, will happen on some major chain, and they will get a celebrity to weigh in to to get people to switch over to the fork that they want. That's uh, <coughs> the way things work, and it's stupid. But either way, the okay, next one. That was Squigs, by the way. Was great question, Squigs. Which, by the way, nice question. I wasn't calling you stupid. I was calling the idea of ranking things stupid. Yes. JP12X. Now, let's, let's make it faster. Lightning round, okay? I was targeted in the recent T-Mobile Coinbase hack. I feel the whole thing is likely due to T-Mobile's poor security. Imagine that. And gathering more info than they should have. Imagine that. Even so, instant transactions can have a downside. Is there anything in place to address hacks and theft? Sean. Yeah, past here. You guys explain it. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Uh, Yes, there are. Uh, it's called um, a wallet, and you should get one of those. You can get MetaMask is a great one. Um, those are not centralized. Uh, they do not have your keys stored on a server if you don't give them away. And you use that, and it doesn't matter how many T-Mobiles get hacked, you will never have your Bitcoin or crypto, whatever cryptocurrency you like to use wallet hacked. Yeah. Quick answer. And mine's pretty, pretty uh, cliche at this point, but not your keys, not your crypto. Um, and don't keep your keys. Uh, if you're really paranoid, then don't keep them even on a machine that's connected to the internet. And if you do that, you will never uh, be victim to one of those. This sorry, is a, sorry uh, you had that issue, though, Mr. Peacock. That's terrible. 
It sucks. Yeah, um, also fuck this is guys. actually uh, probably a really horrible question for lightning round. Uh, it's a great question though, that uh, all of those things are kind of mixed together, but um, the use of blockchain and crypto can solve these issues. And, and the, the biggest one is they shouldn't have been holding that info. They've been sold as a company that they need to hold this info for demographic purposes and marketing persons, again, bean counters to make money on things that aren't their business. It's the Facebook model, right? Um, Facebook model shouldn't apply to your phone company, but it does for whatever reason. They want to know everything about you and your hobbies and everything else. And that's where the weakness is. And uh, uh, you can protect it with crypto, but you can also say it should be decentralized and, you know, you should be holding that info, not them. So yep. yeah. one other Thanks. thing about that that is really important to get out there. Do not use your phone number to secure accounts. Get two-factor yeah. authentication. When you sign up, Google a thing that will uh, let you use a public phone number to receive an SMS notification. They they exist. You can literally <laughs> put in put in a phone number that does not belong to you that will put whatever it receives to the internet. Might find take a while to find one that works. Sign up for stuff with that and switch to two-factor authentication. You will therefore insulate yourself from getting SIM yeah. swapped. That's yeah. super important. Yeah. So. Again, that's usually companies though. Companies are driving that. It isn't the individual. It's not that people want to use their phone number for that. It's the companies say, here's how you do this. And if they don't mm -hmm. offer anything else, it kind of sucks. Um, Angel Breaker, the role of un unified blockchain wallets, uh, private public key infrastructure for interchain. Um, uh, as an example, using uh, uh, Ethan BNB, for example, using the same wallet tech. Um, quick thoughts on that. Fast. Like, Sean. Anything? Uh, hold on. Uh, the role of unified blockchain wallets. Uh, uh, I, I think they're good as long as you own your own keys, you own your own crypto. Um, okay. Great. I would say, can you post more about that? Um, if you'd be willing to do that, I'd be willing to go in and take a look because I've never seen one of these. So this is a new concept to me, um, but uh, at risk of sounding uh, you know, uneducated on the topic, I would say yes and. Uh, if, it, if it's something that somebody can build, try it and see if anybody wants to use it. We'll find out. There's two ways to read it. I think um, it's great to reuse uh, capability for something that you think you have a better idea for. So. Everyone should do that. If they think they've got something better, they can build it on top of something that's already proven. So that's that's wonderful. The other way to read it is uh, wallets that support like interchain multiple stuff. And I've used those and they're great. Um, it's just that, you know, whenever you have a huge menu, there's more places to screw up too. So I'm a little bit wary of wallets to try to do everything. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think if you say the same wallet tech, I mean, I think the public key... Um, tech is the, the, the part that they're all using well, in different ways. With, with MetaMask, for example, you could you use MetaMask for B, for uh, Binance Chain and for right. Ethereum. Right. And so it's the same thing, but they're using it for in different yeah. for their own for their own thing. Yeah. So um yeah, I mean it's it could it could be good. Uh, it's usually if you're trying to standardize stuff you're you're getting least common denominator too. So sometimes you can't do everything you could do if it was a native, but whatever. And, and a wallet's just a convenience thing anyway. Yep. It's just a way for you to organize your keys yep yep okay next yep. jegs and we'll just we'll do this just until close to the 30 mark all right um jegs how important is blockchain interoperability and what are the benefits we've, we've probably already answered that should this is what do you guys want to skip this one yeah i think yeah. we we did everything, everything above yep. okay um clutch how do you see patented ip on interoperability play a role for the future of decentralized interop um any, any thoughts uh, it's much better for you guys to answer this one, but I think it's imp I think it's important. Obviously, I, I think I, you're, you're the one that's actually done it, so what well, you can answer it. Go for it. Uh, I mean, we we patented it for obvious reasons in in this world that we're in to protect our, ourselves and to protect the tech, um, and uh, you know, it definitely has a role in sales because anybody wanting to implement uh, interoperability in a serious environment is going to be worried about, oh shit, we maybe can't build it this way because they have that patent, um, that that does exist and it's a reality and that's why we have it. Um, you know, right. patents themselves, I think could be improved. A lot of people don't like patents. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in one of the many, well, one of the few things I'm agnostic about is that, that, yeah, I mean, I, I think they should be improved, but real world, 
you know, it's it's what it is, and uh, we have to participate in that world. So, yeah, yeah, I would say, um, yeah, I would say for sure. Uh, with pat with patent system, it's a paper system for a world that has long since surpassed the limits of that medium, uh, and we can do something much better to protect IP. Oh, the, the yeah. other the other piece of that is. Um, <laughs> The technology that you're talking about, use, you're talking about IP being. Ah, cut out. Oh, you're he frozen. He's at the best time. He said man. something. He said Every something. time. We're talking about something. IP. No, uh, yeah. I will <laughs> tell you uh, the uh, things it, that people complain about. Ah, with... uh, there he is. Yeah. Right. Sorry, he's I was saying, what what I was saying was that uh, patented IP uh, is going to be a necessary legacy system to integrate with in order to supplant. The legacy system was something blockchain built. So yeah, it's super important. Yeah. And I will say also uh, patents, um, a lot of the things that people complain about with patents uh, are that way because physical patents, uh, they stopped accepting models for proof. And when they started doing things that were more virtual or, or software, instead of saying, okay, uh, we know that if you made a better mousetrap, you don't have to send us a mousetrap because we don't have anywhere to put it anymore. But with software, you probably show us some code where this thing actually runs so and they, they haven't done that and that's i think one of the biggest reasons that people have some of the problems that well said that some of the problems exist anyway it's a great example of failure. Uh, the earlier question how it's uh you know the new tech and blockchain is interacting with yes. paper systems like like greg mm -hmm. said yep okay uh angel breaker <clears throat> is it more likely to have bridging technologies between blockchain systems like messaging frameworks apache kafka uh, sqs or is interchain technology with no intermediate the way to go for customers and companies? What do you guys think? I think I'm gonna say what Dave's gonna say that there has sometimes there there needs to be some some uh, uh, it needs it needs to be in some cases for some things <laughs> for obvious reasons. Yep, Greg, I would say yeah. There's definitely be a lot of that. Um, uh, these technologies are, are going to interoperate in um, a variety of ways with a variety of frameworks and trying a lot of different ways is going to be super important but I think there are going to be cases where you need something as real time as like a byte stream uh, in order to make it um, uh, make it sufficiently efficient for some use cases um, yep. and, and so you're going to see a lot of that in where it's necessary and places where they don't go to the trouble and it isn't. Yep. Dave? Um, I Yeah what they said, basically, I don't think that, I don't think that, um, like, I don't like to have to, and it depends on what you're trying to solve. You know, if you're a dissident, if you're a journalist, you know, you don't want an intermediate, you want to be directly secure with what you're the other end of the transaction. But, um, you know, if you're a business or if you're somebody trying to build something that defeats the system, you're going to, you have to use the system to, to, to build that thing that you want to yeah. build. Or if your kids are on that messaging system, you want to make sure that certain things aren't going to get, you know, shown to them. Right. Yeah. There's, it, it just, it is, <laughs> it is, it is uh, if, and if you're in, um, if you're in, uh, you know, my business for a, a long time, you get a, um, you can get a feel, you can look at a system and you can see um, uh, elegance is, is great. Elegance is amazing. Dogma is bad. If you go and you try to build a system to a model and it has to fit that model, it's bad. Um, because you will fail. You'll, you'll do things that you shouldn't have done. Uh, elegance is great because you can just feel it. It's kind of like, uh, you know, if, you know, if you're building something physical, you can tell uh, when it's uh, sturdy, you can tell, you know, there's, there's something about it. And it's much like that with software. You know, if there are too many pieces in between uh, point A and point B, then it's probably not right, you know, and yep. it's a very natural thing. And, and it all, you know, breaks down into the competition. It's like, well, if it works, it works. It's the most important thing, and uh, if uh, if one part of it ends up breaking a lot, then you probably you know something wrong. So anyway, all right. Next, cryptocurrency asks my employee wants to start play to earn gaming. What free to start play to earn games do you recommend? Would you, would be good to hear what the experts think think is good or bad? Since I trust the Den Social platform, any, uh, anything similar would be good. Talk oh, about. thank you. <laughs> um, you guys have thoughts on that? Um, you know, I, I think that 
the key here is trust, right? Like, and if you can't look at the code and say, like, I wouldn't, I won't tell you one that I can trust, and I, I don't think anybody should unless they've looked at the contract code, because that's out there, and that's really the power of blockchains uh, uh, pushing trust to the edge capacity. So, like, if you have a particular one that you want to to have people look at, that'd be something to post. But uh, we shouldn't speculate unless we know what contract you're talking about. If I'm going to speculate, though, <clears throat> um, I would say that you know there's platforms that do just this, the the blockchain gaming, and and look through the ones that don't require you to spend money on it to try it because the worst case you're out money that you won from from playing the game. Um, uh, I know, like we talked about Aircoins already. That's you don't that's still free, right? You don't, Sean. You don't have to yeah, uh, yeah buy anything. Yeah, so you can you, you can like with, withdraw your coins. You have to put in a request. Yeah, yeah, right. If there's hurdles and nothing's quite perfect yet, but that's an example of something you could integrate into your day-to-day -day life. I used to drive a lot, so what I would do is whenever I stopped for gas, I would pull out my Airphones app and I would look around to see what was in this town or at this gas station and grab some and move along. Um, and at the end of the day, I didn't waste a lot of time. I was just waiting for my fuel to refill and I monetized that time for myself. Or if you spend a lot of time on social networks, obviously, you know, Den is a gamified uh, incentivized version of that. It doesn't cost you anything. So look for stuff that doesn't cost you, doesn't want to take money out of your pocket um, and, and try those out and find out. I did an interview with the, the founder of, of Etka on my channel. You can check that out. They uh, have a, a launch pad, which they launched. Uh, I forget the name. It's the, like the biggest crypto gaming uh, platform now. Um but they they have a lot of games that are you know free to play where you can earn uh, earn to play there and I if you you can look at at, at the uh, the game itself what it's uh, built on if the if the team is docs that's another thing that's important because um, like Dave said there's a lot of things that are that could potentially be scams so it's just it's like everything else do a little bit of research and if if you see if you see red flags, you see red flags. If you see green flags, you see green flags. If you see green flags, go for it. Um, yeah. Um, and, I, and I would say I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I, any game that isn't fun already would probably be the what I would stay away from. You know, if, it, if and I think that's the killer combination. If somebody can put, uh, take a game that is already worth playing on its own and then attach scarcity to it, not even necessarily, oh, churning to, to make money. There would, there will be that, but if you attach real scarcity to it i think it opens up a lot of big things that uh, don't exist right now so yep that's um, a, actually it, one really good point man is uh blockchains integration integrated into other games is probably going to be really where it's mm -hmm. at yeah, and yeah, if you yeah. can do something with the assets besides sell them if there's like any even one yes. more thing to do yes. besides selling it everything about those modeling, modeling a, one of these economies is about uh, literally how much pull is there on, you know, what can I do with that thing? Because if, if I can only sell it, it's going to be worthless. Uh, that's all anybody can do, and that's yeah. all anybody will do. Yeah, right. yeah. So Crypto so geocaching. Hey, needs to build that. Yes, well, you, you, even the thing where they, I can't remember what it's called. There, there's some things around that. If you had, you know, the things you found when, well, whatever, we'll go into that some other day. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're, we have, we have, we have, uh, Utility is key. Left. So you guys yeah. want to go ahead and give, uh, let's give uh, final outs and then we can, yeah. So Sean, what's going on? Uh, not too much, man. Not too much. Um, check out my channel. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Um, that's about it. Cool. Good hanging Greg. out. Greg? Me? Um, I would just say if you heard any ideas or have any ideas that you haven't uh, seen anywhere else, just you know, try to build them, try to make them happen. Um, you can go to Rivet, uh, check us out on Twitter, or go to rivet.cloud, and we'll help you do it if you uh, if you're interested. So, take a look. Nice, Dave. Um, farming's live on Din as of this month, right? Is that out? Yes, and, and going yesterday. yesterday yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. that's great. Um, you can you can now. There's a path to ownership of a layer. Uh, for and this goes right into what we we're talking about for somebody who signs up for a new account doesn't have to buy anything you can um, just by participating and being an awesome human you can earn uh, points that you can use to vote on new layers and new communities that you might want to open for yourself and it doesn't cost a dime to do it and it's a direct route to passive income without any in, 
upfront, uh, you know, skin in the game. True. It's amazing. It's a great, it's a great experiment. Um, and, uh, it took a while because we had to go through a few pivots on how we wanted to build it, but, um, and the, the metrics aren't there yet. They, I think they're going to be there tonight. I hope, uh, tonight, tomorrow. Um, yeah, so it's very so recently hard. there. And, um, and also the apps are out pretty soon too. If you've signed up for beta and haven't got that, um, you can, you know, hit up didn't support, but, the apps are coming out. They'll just be on the app store pretty soon too. Yep. So that'll make things a lot more easy for some people. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So um, that's it. Uh, make sure you watch again next week, but make sure more than anything, uh, Jose included, get an accountant in, go in there and, um, and ask the questions you want to ask, vote on the questions that you like uh, that aren't yours and uh, you know, get ranked and hopefully we can get through uh a, a good portion of them but if they get in the first part of the the, the episode of the episode then you get credit for them as well so in ownership so uh make sure you share this episode make sure you like it uh do all the things where you are and, and don't uh, hesitate to share the linkedin or the uh or the uh twitter uh version of the episode as well so anyway it's everywhere um that's it you guys good yep uh good to go Thank you, guys. See you next week. Appreciate all Thanks, everyone. See you around. Good morning. The first tap of a conductor's wand. The first ribbon in a mile high tower. The master link at the genesis of a never ending chain. The moment a single empty canvas meets a singular master stroke. There is no one thing. Because now, there are many. Because soon, there will be more. Because one is ever the beginning. Like the first link in an infinite chain, or the first rivet in the tallest skyscraper. The master stroke is found in the masterpiece. What will you begin? <laughs>